Thank you for inviting me, um, I would like to say, um, although it was a bit uh, last minute. Um, I think I will start with uh, great, um, uh, honoring the great academic tradition of uh, apologizing for being here. And that's um, mostly because, um, well, um, I guess a lot of you, um, including myself, uh, were looking forward for uh, Stephen Klaasjens to, uh, to give his lecture um, because he's, uh, well, he's a real expert on this terrain, um, working at the National Library. We will provided uh, uh, this uh, great um, uh, website, Delver, this great interface we can use to search all kinds of newspapers and other um, books, etc. Um, but you have to do it um, uh, with me today and uh, with uh, battle afterwards. I'm sorry for um, uh, pulling you with me in this uh, negative uh, downfall. Um, I will be um, um, well discussing um, a bit about uh, Delver, uh, what's in it, uh, how it can be used, um, and based on my own research uh, when I uh, was still studying uh, history, I will um, give you an example of, of how to use this. And afterwards, Beto will uh, uh, compare the Delver uh, dataset with uh, the Belgica Press. Okay, so um, uh, Delver um, is uh, um, made available by the, the National Library of the Netherlands in The Hague. And it has, uh, as, as it can be seen over here, although it is in Dutch, it has over 16 million pages of Dutch newspapers, books and journals. And um, of this, uh, because we are uh, mostly interested in newspapers here today, 1.3 million newspapers are in it. And uh, we have about um, 11 million pages of uh, newspapers. And these are um, newspapers written in Dutch. They uh, were not only the newspapers that appeared in the Netherlands itself, but also in its former colonies. And this is about 15% um, of the uh, exact amount of uh, uh, newspapers that uh, were actually published uh, in, uh, in these areas in Dutch. Um, the period it covers is uh, starts from uh, in 1618, so the first newspaper in it is from 1618, and the last one is from 1995. So there will be probably be a lot of questions about uh, the copyrights. I don't know much about this. Stephen, uh, Stephen would have. So again, my apologies. <laughs> All right, um, so let's have a look at this website. Um, as I said, it is in, uh, in Dutch, but I uh, hope to translate some, uh, some things uh, for you. Um, you can, can search, um, well, the entire collection of text over here if you want to, um, but most of you will not be uh, interested in this. And uh, you can uh, have a look at all kinds of things uh, that's in it. But we would be interested mostly in uh, the newspapers, which we call kranten in Dutch. Okay, so um, I want to to, um, uh, to use an example of my own uh, research here to uh, uh, show you something about how you can uh, can search uh, f um, this uh, data set. So um, my own research was um, based on uh, um, how newspapers uh, covered the um, uh, yeah, the torpedoing of uh, passenger ships during the First World War by uh, German. Um, uh, underseers, how would you say this? this is, uh, like, like submarines, of course. Submarines. Um, so, um, uh, I have one uh, particular example here, and uh, this was uh, the Dutch passenger ship, the Tubantia. And this, um, uh, well, this covered uh, a lot of... Uh, it, 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 uh, um, well, it, it was written a lot about this, so uh, let's just try, uh, for the sake of it, and to just type into Bansia and see what it finds. So we see about well um, over 160,000 results. So this is not really effective. Uh, um, uh, this kind of research. So um, what we would like to do is to uh, uh, to have an advanced search here. And what can we do? Well, first of all. Um, we can uh, uh, type in uh, Tubantia, that's what we're interested in. Um, we could use um, a regular expression if we want to, but let's just keep it with uh, Tubantia. So the Tubantia um, sunk on, uh, uh, in 16 March 1916. 
So I want to look uh, at this particular period and then for about, uh, let's say, a week what the newspapers said about it. And I can select um, uh, different kinds of uh, newspapers that I, uh, I want to have a look at. Um, and during this period, um, at the beginning of the 20th century, Dutch newspapers were very politically colored. So we can say, um, would there be a difference between how socialist papers um, wrote about this um, in comparison with um, confessional newspapers? Now, uh, let's see what we can do with it. Um, we can just search for them, so we now we, uh, we will have the, uh, the different uh, articles in which Tubansi uh, appeared. And uh, the first one, it says uh, directly uh, it has been torpedoed. Um, of course, we can uh, 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 sort these uh, results based on the, um, the date they have. So we have them in order. So now you will see, um, if you click on this, um, you see the, the first example of newspaper. Um, this is uh, something that um, a lot of um, media historians uh, especially like um, because we will not only have uh, uh, the text where uh, Tubensia uh, is, is mentioned, but we also uh, we can see um, where it is located. So we can see if this is front page news and where it is exactly. So the position of it has something to do with the importance of this news. And well, this is one of the, the first messages about this. We can see um, something like uh, the Tubansia verongelukt. So there has been an accident with the Tubansia. They're not sure yet whether it has been torpedoed or not. And if you would look at uh, um, some results from uh, that we have at the end of this page show, um, this will be in page 10, so this will be a week later. Then they will have all kinds of other information. So, um, okay, so this is more detailed information. I saw um, when I last uh, checked this morning, I saw some examples of how the, the stock exchanges uh, uh, has been influenced by the uh, sinking of the Tubansia, etc. Et okay, so this is one way of looking at it. This is what I did for my uh, research. Um, you compare some of these uh, articles in newspapers and you look how they, um, what they uh, describe here, if they um, think this um, should be a reason for uh, the Netherlands itself to be involved in this war or not. Um, so this could be a part of research, but you could also say, okay, we want to look at uh, the influence of this Tubansia for uh, a longer period of time. And then, uh, of course, this kind of um, uh, presentation of results is um, uh, somewhat uh, less handy. Um, so you want to quantify results. So let's say we want to look at um, how, um, how many of these newspapers wrote about the Tubansia for about a week. Then um, it would be more sufficient to say we use the timeline over <coughs> here. And as you can see now, you see for this entire period, for the entire year, um, the amount of uh, mentioning of the Tubansia and if you click on one of these, it will give the example of that date and what kind of newspapers it got mentioned in. We can also do this on a larger scale. So this is the Ngram Viewer, one of the tools from uh, the Delver, uh, for which I uh, think uh, yours, uh, that he told me this, uh, this morning during breakfast. Um, and if we fill in Tubansia here, we have to keep in mind that Tubansia, um, we have now not used any filters, so um, in the normal uh, Delver uh, interface, I could filter out certain words. So I could say, I do not want the word football in it, because Tubansia is a popular uh, name for football clubs. Um, but if we, we have not filled out anything, and we see here a clear peak with the mentioning of the word Tubansia, during the First World War. So uh, that's how we see how it uh, developed uh, over time. Okay, I think um, this is it for uh, our first introduction of uh, the interface of Delver and how it works a little bit. And uh, Beto, I think it would be best that you continue now. Yes, thank you, Leon. Um, yeah, also, I guess, as, as you mentioned, this, is a, this presentation is a little bit of a freestyle. Uh, and, <laughs> and with the disclaimer that neither of us are representing the databases that we're presenting. Uh, so this will also not be a very technical talk. Uh, but I guess just like Leon has done, I, 
I think it might be more fruitful um, yeah, to give an example of how a researcher might use this and sort of what I'm looking for when I use a database like this. Um, and in order to uh, understand what I'm looking for, I'll give you a very brief background of my research. Um, I'll present briefly as well this afternoon, um, but just to, to make you understand what, uh, what I'll be looking for. Um, in my PhD, I, I look at the relation between mass media and politics and the historical evolution of this relation. Uh, and so World War I, as has just been uh, shown, was, you know, was a big moment in terms of the, the political use of the mass media and mass media scrutinizing political events in Europe. Um, however, the mass press had already been in existence for a number of decades, sort of roughly from 1880 onwards. So, I've, so I was interested in how, how did this relation between politics or politicians and the mass press develop in those first decades. And so to research that, uh, I initially tried to find a number of international media events that I could then use as case studies uh, and yeah, in, in which I could investigate this, this interaction. Um, and there's a long story to you know, choosing these cases, etc. But here, uh, I guess I'll just say that one, one of the cases that I was testing out uh, at the start of my PhD was when South African President Paul Kruger came to Europe in 1900 uh, to ask European powers if they could uh, intervene in the South African war against the British Empire. Uh, and this was a case, it was very interesting from the media perspective because he was very much, it was very much a PR tour through European countries where he was trying to uh, yeah, win public opinion, public support and then use this the public opinion in the newspapers to put pressure on politicians to help him, basically. Um, okay, so if we look at the... Uh, so I guess uh, initially, yeah, I just did this sort of pilot study where I looked at uh, anything related to this president in, in the time that he was visiting Europe uh, to see if I could find interesting material there. Um, yeah, so similar search to what Leon just displayed, uh, and I guess I'll just show a few more of the functions uh, that I found useful, could be useful. Um, so on the side here, you also have the option of, or yeah, there's the option of having the OCR text, which I have to say, like, searching uh, newspapers around 1900, I don't really use this as a researcher usually because the newspapers are clear enough in themselves, like the, the TypeScript is similar enough usually to our own. Uh, an exception is Germany with the sort of Gothic uh, uh, TypeScript, which can be more difficult, so then OCR can be more useful. But in terms of Dutch or British papers or Belgian papers, I usually just use the actual uh, newspaper copy itself. So in that sense, for me, the, the OCR is not as relevant. Um, uh, yeah, and like Leon said, on the left side, you see a lot of you can sort of details of uh, of of the articles, which might be useful. Um, and then what I think is is quite useful is here you have an option to download the article. So if you want to save it for your own research purposes or do something with it or use it also for a presentation, whatever it is, uh, and more particularly the the option to cut pieces. So, uh, so you can use, take small instances from these newspaper pages and then to incorporate it into your research. Um, now this is also how I personally uh, structured the, the data that I, that I gather. Like I use Citavi, it's this um, knowledge organizing uh, software. And so I use these snip interesting snippets of newspapers and then I annotate them and categorize them so that I can sort of make my chapters with this. Um, here's an example of a, of a Belgian paper that I'll get to in a minute. Yeah, and then what sometimes seems, because th there can be obviously a lot of hits for something like Kruger, um, but then because I'm interested in how uh, public pressure was um, yeah, exerted on politicians, I mean, this was sort of the, the, the age in which Politicians started paying more, more and more attention to public opinion, trying to gauge public opinion 
I mean, this was before public opinion polls, but in a way, newspapers were functioning as their own public opinion polls, basing their idea of what the public wants or what they need to do uh, on reading newspapers. And so news you see also that newspapers mention more and more public opinion, for example. So to see uh, to what extent they already use this term, uh, you can look for this combination, which doesn't yield much. <laughs> Uh, and I guess this is a good example of what we were talking about in the discussion yesterday where many historians are more interested in concepts as well or like uh, so with public opinion usually the newspaper will not write public opinion is supporting Kruger or is against you know the Dutch politicians or so but it will mo be more qualitatively described in terms of the people or saying this or the big crowds outside cheering him on etc and from this you deduce the idea of public opinion so in that sense, the, the word search doesn't help you that much, I suppose. Um, and one note on this, on this word search is also that I did use it, the, the sort of co-occurrences. I think they can be useful very much in the, the early stages of the research, just trying to find yeah, more relevant articles. Um, and I'll give you an example that the background theme that I use for the PhD is colonialism. It was an interesting media topic. Um, and so, uh, so to find out which cases were interesting to use, I just searched for the names of the political leaders and then Africa. But the only problem was that, as I described yesterday, in uh, Belgica Press, the, the Belgian site, and I think, I'm not sure about Delfer, um, you, you, get it on this, you get these co-occurrences on the same page, but they're not necessarily in the same article. So you get many hits that are not as relevant for you, but it's better than nothing. So I mean, as a researcher, I'm already happy <laughs> that I only have the pages on which there is at least some relevance. Uh, and then obviously the, the, the times, I can give you an example, which is uh, here, they only give you co-occurrences within articles. So every article will be relevant. So obviously it's quicker to find something there. So as a researcher, actually I would use first um, uh, a database like this, like the Times, to see what, is, what are interesting events. And then I use the dates for those to search through the other databases. So I, because then I know which dates are more relevant. Um, or the, the example of the Australian newspapers I mentioned yesterday, which have very good OCR. So I would search for good cases in Australia and then start researching Europe. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, then I'll briefly, uh, and what I was trying to do, or my, my initial idea for the PhD was I'll start with one chapter to sort of get sort of a more quantitative overview of you know, how often were these politicians mentioned uh, in relation also to the South African president, in relation to the press, etc., using co-occurrences. But I quickly discovered that, I mean, one, because the databases are different and the search methods are different, uh, and because often the OCR is not good enough to find all the instances that I couldn't really use it to sort of make any big conclusions, um, but it does help to find more relevant material. So I'm no longer doing this overview chapter w with any quantitative things because it's just not, uh, not good enough in, in a sense for that, uh, but it does help to do find the more qualitative bits. Um, and also with search terms, obviously problems are that uh, spellings can be different, etc. Kruger is a very simple name, but then I also look at how the German emperor responded to him, and then you have to think about either they used Kaiser or Emperor or uh, William or Wilhelm or uh, there are many, many combinations, and y you can sort of correct for this with Boolean terms or m methods, but it's I wouldn't make any statistical uh, conclusions. Okay, I'll briefly uh, then show. Um, the Belgian version, in a way, of, of, uh, of Delphi, which is called Belgica Press. Uh, this, they have uh, put this online over the past year. It's a very nice database, I think, uh, of many Belgian papers. And up to, I think, 1918, everything is on there copyright free. The only problem is that uh, even though you can access it publicly, uh, you cannot download the material. Uh, but as Joris was talking about yesterday with a bit of self-reliance, you can figure that out. So what I now do is I do print screen <laughs> and then put it in paint 
and then, <laughs> and then take little bits out of it in paint and then copy that <laughs> into my organizing system. So in the end, I can get the snippets I want, but it takes a bit more effort. Um, yeah, so Belgica Press, same thing. And here it, it immediately lists uh, yeah, all the different papers. So in, De in Delphi you get all the articles, but here you can choose after the search. Uh, you can sort of first get an overview of which papers have how many uh, hits and then go for one of these. Uh, so an important one in Belgium is L'Independence Belge. It's a sort of main political paper that was read abroad. And then you can go by, uh, yeah, by date. And I think it's also very useful scrolling uh, well, same as with uh, Delphi, I think very user friendly. So yeah, you can easily zoom in on to see which you know parts are interesting for you. Um, obviously, in, in Belgica Press, research is a bit more complex, also with with the keywords because it's bilingual country. So, so searching for something like public opinion, you would first need to do the Dutch search and then the French search. But I mean, this is kind of self ev self evident. Um, And then, uh, yeah, I'll just very briefly show what I tried to do with this initially. Um, and I haven't used any of this material afterwards. This was only pilot study, and it didn't yield what I wanted it to yield. But I, I went th through these articles for, you know, 10, 10 days, in a consecutive days, and then recording basically, uh, well, what was going on in the articles, but then more importantly, uh, was this, are they long, short analyses? Uh, is this about high politics or not? Um, is this, uh, is, are the monarchs involved? Uh, part of the project is on how monarchs are reinventing themselves through mass media, sort of creating a new symbolic leadership role in the, through the press, uh, through having a heavy presence in the press. So see, seeing are monarchs involved, uh, if yes, which ones? Which other politicians is the prime minister mentioned? Uh, is the parliament mentioned? And this is part of researching the argument of personalization of, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wind it up. Uh, um, researching personalization of politics. Uh, are singular leaders more interesting for the press than this abstract, complex parliament? Um, so I compare it to was the parliament mentioned? And then I finally see. Uh, you know, to what extent are they cross-referencing other newspapers in Europe? So you can see the emergence of a, of a sort of a European public sphere. Um, anyway, like I said, I didn't use any of this, but this was how I tried to first do sort of a content analysis of what I was reading. But again, it was all qualitative. Uh, I didn't really uh, deduce sort of uh, quantitative statistics from the searches in that sense. Um, yeah, if you have any questions to either me or Leon, uh, feel free to ask. Okay, th thanks to both our speakers there. Um, we'll take a couple of minutes for questions if, um, if people have them. I just wanted to spare you of the, you know, saving uh, to Microsoft Paint and then editing. You can just like screen, take the screenshot directly into, uh, into your clipboard and paste it into whatever uh, repository you're using. <laughs> just yeah, yeah, I guess the, the problem is that I need a snippet. Uh, Do a research on, on one, you know? No, but I mean, the main problem is that I need uh, very specific small pieces of the text. I don't want the whole article, that, I guess is the point. And that's exactly what you can do. You just select like, the ah, part okay. of the screen that, that, you, that you want. Okay, yeah, well, I'll look at this. Well. But then, like, since I have the mic anyway, uh, yeah, I think uh, those are really, really nice tools. And it makes, makes me kind of jealous that uh, we don't have that in our language. I mean, because all of this research is pretty much like language specific that you can do, but it's really nice. I was just wondering, is there like a possibility to export uh, the results, the search results in bulk? Or do you have to go like individually, like in the Delphi tool and stuff? Like could you like, you know, export all of the, say all of the pages or all of the I don't metadata? I don't think you can, at least not on Belgica Press, but maybe on Delphi. No, the, the uh, Dutch National Library is willing to make deals with the researchers. So that means you have to sign a form in which you promise never to spread you know, all the articles you're, you're going to get to the rest of the world. But then having done that, you can, you can get a download of what you need 
and work with it. And that's that's how I how we work in Utrecht with the uh, with the Delphi newspapers. So that's the one terabyte. That's simply the whole collection on a hard disk, and uh, that can be done for other material as well. They have so it's not just the newspapers, but also uh, uh, other collections. So a quick question for Joris: what, what tools do you use once you've downloaded it? What software applications do you then use for querying the, the data? Well, basically the, the 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 tools I showed yesterday. So the, it's it's a whole it's it's a toolbox which is is varied. What I showed were the robust tools, but there's a lot of small scripts floating around, um, which which we use as well. So it's 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 a complicated uh, answer, I think, but it's uh, it's a whole set of of tools. But but, but we, we use them to do text mining. That is the difference between you know collecting sn snippets and then in the end close reading them, and doing a kind of distant uh, mining of, uh, of the corpus. Um, well, I think we'd better um, stop there for this session since we're running a bit late. Um, just to kind of um, round up there, I mean, we're starting to see quite a few different interfaces for different corpora and digital libraries and text collections. Uh, we're going to see some more after the break. Uh, and then I think, I'm hoping this will lead to a discussion about um, what's useful, what do we need, what things do we need.